Hello, welcome to this new sequence of videos in which I teach you what I have been taught, a sequence of ideas and systems, sorry for shaking the camera there, for awakening, changing your consciousness. In the last video, we talked about admitting there's a problem, believing it's possible to change. Now we find ourselves here on the precipice of the known. Are you, on your own, going to unfuck yourself? Or are you going to need to accept help from an external force, at least external to the frame of ideas that you've been operating within up till now? Pretty obvious, of course, that if you're not happy with life, if you admit it's a problem and it's possible to change, that help is required. A surprising number of people don't like help. And in fact, when I think about how step three functions in my own life, I'm sometimes quite reluctant to accept guidance from other people, even in situations where I feel like I'm out of my depth, if I'm fearful or lost, I still somehow believe that it's up to me to resolve that situation. And there's a kind of narcissism in that and a myopia in that thinking that the very source of the problem, i.e. my understanding and perspective, even though I acknowledge that there are such things as external, actual, objective problems, we are not in an entirely benevolent world, someone once said to me. What I can alter in any situation is my perception of it, my relationship to it. Step three is a willingness to take on board new data. How it applies in the obvious example of chemical dependency and becoming free from addiction, chemical addiction at least, is being willing to accept this one particular suggestion, become abstinent from drugs and alcohol one day at a time. This can't be done without support, can't be done without taking the first two steps, can't be done in my experience without community, without a kind of new perspective of reality. Now, how are we going to transition into a new perspective? How can, as they say in Buddhism, how can the unenlightened mind become enlightened? How can the, un how can the enlightened mind ever have been unenlightened? There is transition, there is metamorphoses, it's a biological fact and consistent metaphor, theologically at least, that we transform, we transition. And I would argue that step three is a significant part. The point where you're willing to accept external data, the point where you're willing to take on board new information is vital. So when someone says to me, oh, what you have to do is not drink or take drugs one day at a time, at first I'm very resistant to that idea. Or if it's like I want to change the way I, uh, my rom romantic relationships and someone says period of abstinence or don't be involved in relationships that are motivated by sex or whatever, when I have to be willing to go to let go of my perspective as opposed to saying, no, 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 my worldview is, uh, is all right, it's working for me. You can't simultaneously be fucked and in control, can you? You can't simultaneously be a mess, be unhappy with the world, but then refuse to accept any new influence. In the original version of Step 3, Israel uh, made a decision to turn our will and our life over to the care of God as we understood God. I changed it to, uh, are you on your own going to unfuck yourself? Because for me, it brought me to that kind of place of terminus. It brought me to a point of uh, accepting that I'm, I'm broken and that in in my own head, there is no solution. There's no solution within the limitations of my imagination as I've been experiencing it up to now. And that if the answers to my problem were in my head, I would have found them by now. So step three means I'll ask advice from another person, I'll belong to a new collective, and in my case, and I would suggest yours as well, developing a, some kind of spiritual belief, some relationship with the transcendent or the unknown, some relationship with the mystery, some relationship with the power of this world. I sometimes think that there is a power greater than ourselves operating within our own anatomy. None of us are in control of our respiration or direct digestion or our cardiovascular system. Our personal identity rests upon this anatomical, biological miracle tiny tiny leaf on the lake of our total being that we don't know what goes on in the depths. Spiritual people believe, I recently had a conversation with Sad Guru who said as much that there is a deep intelligence to nature and that if we clean our consciousness and to a degree relinquish our 
belief in the individual self, the faith-based system in my case of Russell or whoever you are. I'm this person, I do this, that happened to me, this is how I act, well, I'm the kind of person that you can trust, I'm the kind of person that just can't say no. You know, whatever it is you believe about yourself, to a degree it's a construct in my opinion and if we open ourselves to new beliefs it's like we can commune with the deepest intelligence, the deep intelligence that's running your body right now, the deep intelligence that enables you to immediately decode these words and understand what I'm saying, the intelligence that's provided for us all material reality and the advances of science and technology and keeps the cosmos operating, the planets spinning in their spheres, the limitless miracles that occur sub-molecularly and I use the word miracle to mean power that we can't yet understand. In step three we invite this power into our life. We make a decision to accept help. Once you've done that, once you've admitted that you're fucked, that it's possible to not be fucked, that you yourself are not going to unfuck yourself, then you're ready for the next step. That is one of analysis and inventory and I will talk to you about that in the very next video we make. Thank you. Hello, I'm doing these new videos more frequently now. Please hit the notification button at the end of this video because then you'll get a, like a little bell when uh, I post a new video and I'd like you to get a little bell when I post a video. Then I can, I don't know, be buzzing away in your pocket. Sounds like I'd be like a little pocket mosquito. Anyway, subscribe, click the bell because I want more people to watch the YouTube videos. You, specifically.